best name that I go by. These kids, they start at four years of age. I've been clocked uh, about 138. I've been shooting for one of them Kenny Clay state jackets. I love her dad, she ain't gonna beat me. Yes, I will. Take it all good stuff. <laughs> they don't like girls out there. To me, second is the first loser. Hey, dirty drivers. I will beat Donnie Knox. He's just a pawn. I hate to tell you, Donnie, I'm gonna beat you. You can battle it out. I've been clocked 138. It's very hard being a female in this sport. To come out here and win, you're making an achievement for yourself. He can, he can talk good stuff. <laughs> How I come to acquire Liberty Raceway uh, come from a from a dream back in the 70s when I used to run here as a very young man. I always said that I would like to own this raceway because of the potential of the raceway, what it could bring to the public. Some people think of go-karts of buying their kids a go-kart in their backyards. Well, that's where it can start sometime. Whatever anybody could get their hands on, they would put on frames and these Sears and Robux carts, and the cart could come from anywhere, or homemade stuff. They worked all week to bring it to this racetrack on Saturday to take out their competition to the edge and their, and their grudges right here. That in turn, what created some of these series. No other track has the history this race facility has. I want to bring it to its utmost potential that when you pulled in this driveway, you knew that you was at a racetrack. What the King of Clay means to this racetrack and to these drivers, you run these six events and you're able to wear that leather jacket and say that you're the King of the Clay champion. That is something that people can race all their life and never achieve. This is my field of dreams. If you build it, they'll come. Kart racing and the families go hand in hand. Triple generation racing is, is nothing to this sport. These kids, they start at four years of age. You got your grandpa's coming, you got your grandma's coming, they want to see their children race. You got your wives that come to root you on, if they like you. <laughs> Grandpa races, all of a sudden son picks up racing, then the grandson picks up racing. It may be the daughter that picks it up, but it's both a generation. The families is going to follow, but the dream is what the younger people's after. My name is Robbie Yao, or Robbie the Kid Yao. The man to my right is my father, Mike Yao. And then my man to the left is my grandfather, Joe Yao. We are three generation racing. I've been racing my life for about 15 years. My dad, he raced for a couple years before I was born, and then as soon as he got me into it, I fell in love with it. In 1955 is when I got into racing. The first car that we got was from Western Auto and Sears Robo. So that's been many a year back. The class that I race in is called Unlimited All-Stars. I've been clocked uh, about 138. It's really fast. <laughs> Every racer here is a good group of people to race with. And we all consider each other family. My name is Zach Burrow. I've been racing for 13 years. This is my mom, Marty, my dad, Tommy, girlfriend, Kirsty. My dad, he raced 15 years before I was born. His dad got him into racing. My grandpa, he raced cars. I've just been at the track since I was a little toddler. We told him he could do anything he wanted to do. He didn't have to race go-karts. We'll play ball, whatever. He wanted to race go-karts, so we're racing go-karts. I've been shooting for one of them Ken and Clay state jackets, but I ain't got that yet. I finished second too many times. My sister came in one day and she says, why do you want to be grimy and dirty all the time? But then she stayed around and she realized just how much of a family sport this is. My name is Jessica Hooser. I'm 22 years old and I have been racing for almost two years now. 
My brother right here is the one that's the reason that I started racing. My name is Bradley Hooser. I'm uh, almost 21. I, uh, I raced dirt bikes for about six, seven years. I broke every bone I could, and after I broke my wrist for the second time, I came home from school one day, and there it was. There was a go-kart, and I was like, let's give it a try. We've raced together about three or four times now. We uh, There was one race down here in particular. Little we, brother we, spun his sister out. I had a couple big names behind me, and uh, we were coming up on Jessica. And I was like, man, I don't want to do this. My sister, you know, I, I know I'm going to have to take her out, because, I mean, I got him hitting me. And we're about to lap her, so I came up underneath her like this. I looked at her and I and looked I at didn't her. Look. It's too late. I he did throw up his hand I, and I, say I threw he was my hand sorry. Though. I was sorry, he but did. He I had did. to send her to the fence. Race it is. Racing. racing is racing. I told her before, you might be my sister, but you ain't no different when we hit the track. No, it's very hard being a female in this sport. They don't like girls out there. When they come up to you, you got to show them that you're not going to let them run all over you. You got to give it back to them. No guy likes big people. You gotta right? earn your respect. I mean, come on. So down. I ain't gonna let her beat me. I love her death, but she ain't gonna beat me. Yes, I will. <laughs> the king of the clay is the North Carolina points champion. You're not coming here to race a local points race. You're coming to race the best. You're coming to race people like Donnie Nall, Daniel Armstrong. Robbie Yell. I mean, you, you see all these big names to come out here and win. You're making an achievement for yourself. My personal best achievement was last weekend. I did finally beat Donnie Nall, and I know you do it. It's it's been three years. I've been chasing him. We've been fighting hard in champ. And it was a good, clean race, and it was and perfect. He he can talk good stuff. <laughs> My name is uh, Donnie Nall. I am 24 years old. Uh, I've been racing since 1994. My daddy's friend was racing, and uh, he got me into racing. I've won several state championships. In 2007, I won a Triple Crown. That was uh, pretty amazing. I won light, medium, and heavy championship. I just love to win. I sit behind when it's handling real good. The thrill battling for the lead. Real good feeling. It's hard to run up front, but when you beat them cart shops and them motor builders and all, I mean, you feel like you've done something. I'm here to prove that I'm probably the best in, in what I do and run the UAS class. They love, love to race. Yeah. Go out there, take each lap, just like it's the last lap. Seven laps, lap. around number two, seven laps. Let me go first. Go for it. My personal motto. Whoever grid that I pull on, whatever raceway it may be, my main objective was I come prepared to win. Balls of the wall. And that's that's the saying I always get myself pumped up with before I go out. Balls of the wall, so. Okay, my personal motto for racing. You go fast, turn left. So and, uh, we'll take a boot from the room. Done. I mean, to, to me, second is the first loser. My personal motto for racing. Go fast, turn left, and drive it like you stole it. Now that's you go. Right. Well, consider the fact that somebody just stole mine. All right, let me go for the cut camps. I didn't know what else to say. You gotta smell the alcohol. Guys. <laughs> okay. um, Alright, my personal motto is just gotta go out there and drive it like you stole it. And just have right, a, drive have it a like good you time back. Just have a good time. Dude, that was good. The racers and fans, they start the day before coming in here because they, they don't want anybody to get their parking spot. At 6.30 the following morning, the line comes. They file in, they file in. They come in, set the stage in their trailers, their equipments, until your first open practice begins. Track preparation, other than safety, is probably the top of the line. The racers come pay the money, they, they want to race on the best race track they can. It don't matter that you got to a nice facility. Your racetrack is bad. That's going to spread like fire. You're going to lose all your people. It may be rough, it may be holy, it may be dusty. You got to be very sharp watching your weather. So the preparation, when it boils down to it, fine tooth comb. 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome you out to the North Carolina King of Clay Series race number three. In Liberty Raceway Park, registration is open. You can come on up to the flag stand and sign up. We tech us down off of turns three and four. You need to carry your go kart stuff there so they can be able to race today. WKA, the World Karting Association, they do have a rule package. We monitor by all structured program that is as strict as NASCAR when it comes down to the technicalities. When they come down here and these tech officials, they physically look at that car, bolts, structures, carter key pins, just like rolling through a NASCAR tunnel. They don't weigh the cars. The weighing of the car is the crew and the driver the scale is open for them to come in here and make sure that they are they are weighed properly. On the times and trials and how it goes through to a given day is uh, you give an open practice session of approximately 15 minutes to let people see how their equipment feels. And then you go into the segment of what you call control practices. You're going to practice with the people that you're going to be racing against that day. You get two control rounds of your practice you'll set the time for your qualifying or heat races at that time. Most of the time, it's a 30-minute window. Give everybody a break, settle down, eat, do whatever they want, need to do, make preparations to make their runs for qualifying. We decided this year, you know, as the, at one of the events to start a, uh, the fishing contest, the person to catch the biggest fish, we was gonna give them a $100 bill. Each race has went by, and, and a catfish has not been caught. We have doubled the ante, and now we're up to a $300 pot. They're standing there hook, line, and sinker sometime 30 minutes early, and they're, they're out here hunting their spot. Much less they, uh, the, the ones I see go out here baiting their holes when I'm not looking, chunking bait in. <laughs> they're making their setup. <laughs> That's the gray area of the fishing rodeo. <laughs> The jumping in the pond deal, we're sitting out here 99 degrees outside, smoking hot. You know everybody's sweating to death. I just went into the announcer. I said, Phil, how about announcing the first one in the pond, we're going to give them $100. I had three to four people bailing in the pond, <laughs> trying to get in there first. And then after that, we had people jump in and swim all the way back and forth just to cool off. <laughs> so it turned into a very hilarious situation. We didn't start the driver's meeting. We're gonna do qualifying as we are since the track's set and y'all already geared for this track. Like we're gonna make it short and sweet. We're gonna go into qualifying. Take your time and please drink water. Got a couple of things to go over. Three spin rules. You spin three times to bring out the caution. You gotta come off the track. Okay, three cranks and you're done. Listen, I'm gonna turn it over to Boyd and all your technical questions. I thank you, Boyd. Uh, thank you, Jerry. My name's Boyd Maloney. For those of you who don't know me, to get respect, you gotta give respect. One or two we walk away unhappy, but we're never going to make everybody happy. We will make it fair, though, guys. The calls will never change. They'll always be the consistent, and they'll be the same. That's all you can ask for today. Listen, Dale, he got run over here a month ago. A month ago. It was a freak accident, but he got run over. If I got a caution out and my lights is on and y'all don't get off the gas pedal, I'm going to send you to your trailer because it hurts when you get run over. That's it Dale, it hurts. <laughs> Five laps in qualifying, 20 lap main events. Look, y'all ain't killing each other. You're bumping each other. That's racing. Let's just go out there. The people you're standing beside is the same people you're gonna be on the racetrack with. Nobody hates nobody out here. I hate, absolutely hate dirty drivers. Trey Decker. Trey Decker? Trey Decker. He's always no shirt. I think he needs to go on somewhere. Sometimes he has an attitude and he doesn't know how to adjust it. We get fired up in the heat of the moment, but five minutes from now we're all going to be calm. He's one of those people that you know what his temper is. I will beat Donnie Hall. <laughs> He's just a punk. He's a punk. That's exactly what I think about him. He's one every f***ing one there is. I try to just avoid him when I'm on the track. Where do I need to look? They make go-kart go -kart and look bad. The first time I met him, my girlfriend came up to me, some guy just hit on me. And I was like, oh, really? Yep, Trey Decker. You ain't got that on film, dude. This is not NASCAR. This is go-karts. We're here to have a good time. You know what I mean?
When it comes to qualifying, I get real nervous. I get butterflies in my stomach. I don't know why. No, I'm pretty good at Liberty, I guess. I mean, Liberty is my home track. I really do like it. He, he is the man, I mean, period. Donnie Dahl is the man to beat. I guess my childhood rival is still my rival today, Zach Burrow. Of course, he's always up front. And, uh... We had a conversation about four years ago. <laughs> Stuff in there, I shouldn't discuss on the field. He got in a fist brawl, and some words were said. He quit racing me like that. And... You'll get my respect. Oh, Lord. Yes. If you look at the points, first and second, Donnie's first, my brother's second. Hauser is, he's a good racer. I'm not looking at anybody but that 29. I'm going right after his rear bumper. I'll race him the same way he racing me. We race for good. I hate to tell you, Donnie, I'm going to beat you. Me and him battle it out. As best man wins. Oh, oh, yeah, you wait. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please all rise for the land of our national anthem. The rain is very aggravating because you worked all day, you've tried so hard, you've practiced, you've qualified, you're getting ready to go out there and race, and then the rain comes. The rain will screw with you so bad it's not even funny. I mean, it just, it, it, it'll, it'll make you pull your hair out. Easy. When you got a storm on the non-believer side and, and the believers and, and the hopers, you got so many in hope, please don't cancel this race. We want to race, please. Well, you finally get the go-kart to where you need it, and same thing as today, you get done qualifying, it rains. Well, these doubters, they see things coming around. Well, they'll see a mess on the racetrack, and all of a sudden, 15 minutes, they'll start seeing the racetrack coming together, coming together, coming together. Well, they start, they go into a scramble, trying to prepare and prep their tires, you know what I'm saying? They're going to come to the next five minutes, they ain't going to qualify. We're not sitting on the pole that way. Stop hitting it to the grid. When that tractor comes off, it's going to qualify. You're sitting on the pole, and it rains, and it pays a thousand dollars for you to win. You you doing the rain dance? I've done so. Orders from headquarters. What's going on? Orders from headquarters. I asked him. I said, Jerry, can you tell us what's going on? He said, they're making the call. I said, you got a radio. Can you tell me? You're gonna have people to get upset and people don't. I've been down there with all the carts running. I can't hear that nothing. That's why I asked Jerry because I was next to qualify. These people come to race, so we're gonna give them a race if we can. The race must go on. Tires is, is, one, is one of the most important things of the car to race. Are you going to go to a uh, gunfight with a knife in your hand? They do. If you're a racer, you're going to have you're going to have tires that's prepped in different manners because you don't never know when it's going to rain. Now, do I leave what I had, or do I go back to the what I started this morning and I was flying this morning, or do I go with what I was just flying on before the rain came? I've seen it two seconds faster by just changing four tires on a go-kart. Tires is everything. That ain't gonna make you win, but it you know makes makes life a lot easier with a new set of tires. When the racetrack changes, it opens up a whole new world of who can win. We are down in the dirt now. A very competitive race is going on because of what did take place here. Okay. We've done what was the best we could do with it. It's not a perfect condition track, but it's it's a very good racing track. The prize you're going to get, you're going to see a lot of people that's going to hit this track and they're going to run super fast. They're going to run, run fast and they run all day. No, I said go up there, please. So you're going to see a lot of different variables happen. Come on out here, I love you. All right, I love you, Pop. Bye. Clutch burned out. I really couldn't do nothing with it, but hopefully we can come back and get him another race. Not 
at this ain't done that. Your stupid driver is on. Going too good so far. Yeah. Missing the tires a little bit. Okay, it's alright. It's gonna be good. It's <laughs> us. He's just letting it roll when he's rolling. Don't be crazy.